Hello, my name is Alan, and in this video we're going to be going over the results of the Reddit mod poll, which was released back in July of 2020. We had a total of 55 respondents. So before we get started, I want to talk about the difference between correlation and causation. So this is one of my favorite graphs. It shows the correlation between the number of people who have drowned in swimming pools and the number of movies that are released starring Nicolas Cage. And you can see that there's a 70% correlation. Now, hopefully these things aren't actually related, but it can show how you might associate data with other types of data when there really, there really is no correlation. So keep that in mind. We're gonna be cross comparing only the data that we've collected by itself. And that's because we only have 55 respondents out of the tens of thousands of moderators that are on the platform. So we need to be careful with that. So it's mostly designed for interesting correlations rather than anything considered factual. That's the big disclaimer. Uh, this is what the data set looks like. It's uh, going to be available in the description of this video in case you want to do your own analysis. So if you're interested, if you have any questions, just let me know and I'm happy to help out. So let's get started. Let's go through some of the data to show what we found. All right, so starting off, uh, for basic demographic information, we had uh, the gender being roughly 75% male. I'm pretty sure that Reddit is, I believe, uh, two-thirds male on average. Um, as for age, it's stacked pretty evenly between the different age sets, with about 50% of mods that took the poll being under the age of 21. Remember, this just represents who took the poll, not who's actually on the platform. Um, these age demographics that you see here were split into four different categories for the data analysis section near the end, where I lumped together all, everyone between the ages of 22 to 35, and then everybody over the age of 36 was lumped together for four different groups for analysis. Uh, continuing with the demographics, in what region that people lived in, most people are in North America, followed by Europe which accounts for roughly 90% of the people who took the poll. Um, this is pretty consistent with the general demographics of Reddit. The next section, we have time on Reddit. So this is how old people's Reddit accounts are, as well as how long they've been a moderator on Reddit. For the most part, it looks like a solid 50%, almost 50% of moderators have been on the platform for more than five years, or at least it comes very close. So there's a wide diversity in the number of moderators that we have as far as how long they've been on Reddit, as well as how long they've actually been modding compared to the graph on the right. Continuing with more information about their time on Reddit, now we're talking about more day-to-day. -day. So how active are they on Reddit? How much time do they spend per session? Um, how much time do they spend moderating relative to the amount of time that they're on the platform? So most people are online three to five hours per day. Um, which the next common thing being slightly less, one to two hours. As far as how much time of their time they spend moderating, it varies pretty dramatically, anywhere from a small fraction to the majority of their time. So this will be pretty good to analyze once we get down into that. For the number of managed communities, this was pretty interesting. So we had some people, there, there were a few people who filled in extra and said that they managed hundreds of communities, which is great to see very engaged, active mods. For the most part, though, the average moderator organizes about two to five communities. As far as members in managed communities went, we saw lots of diversity in this. I did not simplify these categories simply because I wanted to get this released as quickly as possible, so I wasn't able to extract much information from this. Uh, changes in moderation, opinions, or behavior based on the number of members in their largest community is what this is how moderators actually became mods, there seemed to be a significant overlap in the different ways that people became mods, mostly because organizing an average of two to five communities, there's probably different ways that you got involved with them, with the most common being that they applied directly to a call for applications, which is a great way, especially if you're not a current moderator, to get involved. Otherwise, they were personally invited by moderators uh, that are already a member of that community or they were the direct founder of the community. So creating their own subreddit, which almost 50% of respondents said. And then finally being awarded a community uh, from a sub subreddit, so a Reddit request, other communities like that. As far as what subreddit categories 
were modded, the most common were probably the ones that you would associate most with Reddit itself, being entertainment, gaming, video games, technology, memes, animals, and it went down from there. These are the top 10, so we opted not to include all of the other different categories simply because there's something like 30 of them. For the reasons that individuals decided to become a mod, enforcing the rules was number one, which after all is the primary responsibility of being a moderator, followed by doing it as a personal hobby that they enjoy, and then encouraging discussion, which is great to see that there are a lot of people who were primarily focused on encouraging discussion, followed by sharing knowledge or then creating a community on an activity that they personally enjoyed. So now we're getting into the share your thoughts on the statement. So we had 10 statements where you could agree or disagree or remain neutral with those statements. So this is the first one. Uh, Mod's most important role is to promote discussion in the community where people mostly agreed. Um, the numbers haven't been included on this. They were just copied directly from the poll. So the following graphs won't contain that much information, but when we go into the analysis, we're going to see a little bit more. Next up was a mod's most important rule is to enforce rules in the community. Basically everybody mostly agreed or strongly agreed, which was much more significant than promoting discussion in the community. And let's be honest, it is you do have to actually moderate the community before you can encourage or promote the community. Next up we had the statement, I'm passionate about the subreddit topics that I moderate, which most people are, so that's good to see. Next we have, I wouldn't moderate a subreddit if I wasn't personally interested in the category or topic. And we can see that this is much more normalized than the previous graph. So just because there are some people who aren't necessarily passionate or interested about their subreddits, that doesn't mean that they're not willing to moderate them as well. Next was being a moderator negatively impacts my ability to share what I really feel or believe. And this is one of the most interesting ones. We had a very wide diversity of responses. So we're gonna be going into this a little bit more with the analysis to see how that correlates with other opinions. After it was the statement, I had the tools I need to moderate my subreddit successfully. For the most part, most people agreed that they had good, uh, the tools that they needed. However, there are some that disagree and it would be great to follow up with those individuals just to see what they were looking for still. The next statement was Reddit should provide more tools to moderators to support rule enforcement. And basically everyone agreed. I believe this was over 90% said that Reddit should provide more tools to moderators. So the following statement was Reddit should provide more tools to moderators to support community engagement, where much more people were neutral about this statement, um, but for the most part agreed that it's always good to get new tools. Second to last, we had warnings or temporary bans should be issued before permanent bans, which for the most part was agreed. Many people uh, selected to go neutral on this just because I can, I can imagine there are many cases when it's just easier to do a permanent ban. And finally, the community should have the right to vote for changes to the rules. And this is much more normally distributed, so we're going to be taking a look at what type of individuals were likely to say that they would strongly agree or disagree with the statement. So for the end of this video, we're going to be going over some of the correlations that I was able to find in the data, as well as explaining how you can go through and find your own correlations if you're interested. Just to give an example of what would not be considered a correlation or a weak correlation is this graph here, which is a comparison of how likely someone is to believe that promoting discussion in the community is important and their age. So for the most part, the different age groups that we have, it's more or less average, it's normalized between the different levels of agreement, uh, except for right here, but this might just be an anomaly between the two of them, as compared to something like this, which is the number of years that somebody has been a moderator compared to their age. And logically, this would line up. It would make more sense that if somebody is younger, under the age of 18, they haven't been modding as long, where most of them have only been moderators for one to two years, versus somebody who is over the age of 35, the average majority of them has been modding for much longer, between six to nine years. And so that's an example of a direct correlation that's statistically significant. It's difficult to say how significant, but it is significant. And so moving on to some of the other comparisons, um, this is a graph showing the 
likelihood that you're going to spend more time on Reddit, depending on if you're modding topics that you're passionate about, where you can see that individuals who were only active a few days per week were saying that they usually weren't moderating for topics that they liked, compared to individuals who strongly agreed that they were passionate about the topics that they modded, were likely to be more active on the platform, which makes sense. When it comes to the amount of time browsing Reddit versus only moderating for topics that you find interesting, this had a similar correlation where when individuals were willing to moderate for topics they were less interested in, they were, as a result, less active on the platform. And it's difficult to say what the cause and effect relationship between this was, but if you're interested in staying active on the platform, definitely make sure that you are moderating content that you are passionate about. That's very important. Next up was an analysis of how likely or important you believe it was to do warnings or temporary bans before permanent bans based on age. And what we found is that it is surprisingly much more likely that younger moderators are to offer warnings or temp bans as compared to individuals who are usually older, so especially above the age of 35. A uh, disclaimer has to be given here in that if you do an analysis of the data um, or stacking, most people for the most part agree that warnings or temporary bans should be issued, but of the groups who do disagree with this, the majority of them are older. And finally, the last comparison we're going to do is users' age versus their likelihood of supporting voting for the rules within the community. And the strongest correlation that you can see here is that it's much more likely that older individuals or older moderators are not going to support voting for the rules. This might be because they have seen that it's either ineffective or it's difficult to understand that. This is where further follow-up would be much more valuable to get a better understanding of why correlations like this exist. Now, if you wish to do some of your own data analysis, the easiest way to do that is to go back over to the raw data, go up to the top and create a pivot table. Make sure that you only have one header. I kept both of them. The second one is usually easiest, so we'll adjust to only use that. Create a new pivot table. At that point, you can select two different data sets over on the columns. Make sure that you add the values for one of those categories and then average the data. So using percentage rather than individuals, select all of the data, but exclude the totals and then insert the chart. And from there, you can visualize the data and mess around with it any way you'd like. And uh, ultimately, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this analysis, this video, and thought it was interesting. Um, thank you for watching. Have a great day.